let's talk about the VIX real quick. I want to go through a few trades or at least one trade in the VIX. Talk a little bit about the VIX. Hop into the last week at Dan Camp and then uh, talk about Vernon Dog. So let's talk about the VIX. This is not nearly as complicated as it looks. This is the VIX. This is a 10-day simple moving average. This is the S&P 500 overlaid, closing basis, obviously, so you can see what's happening. And the middle is the close, the open, and the high distance from the moving average. And the idea with the VIX is wait for it to get stretched away and look to play it. If it gets stretched to the upside, look to buy the market or short the VIX. If it gets stretched to the downside, look to short the market or buy the VIX. And I hope I said from the on the upside, stretching upside, look to short the VIX. Like right here at stretch, you see it imploded a little bit. The real money is in the asymmetrical moves to the upside as opposed to the implosion of the VIX. So the explosion of volatility, everybody just panics and freaks out which we didn't really get this morning, but the VIX is so high now, maybe that's why. And that was a little shocking to me, or surprising, I should say. Nothing shocks me too much in the markets anyway. But anyway, down here is the range. And as I've said in prior, it's just a high minus low based on the average true range, going back one day for the average true range, and today's high minus low. And ideally, you don't want to hop in until this range begins to expand a little bit, maybe past 50 and in some cases, if you're looking for an explosion in the VIX, maybe past 100. I know I talked about these things, so I'm trying to just rush through them now. And anyway, the middle chart is, you can see these highs here. And down here, you can see this is a 10%. 10% is a good round number when I did my VIX systems, which were inspired by a lot of Lenny, Larry, Lenny, Larry Connor's research way back in the mid-90s. I found that 10% was a good round number for reversions of the mean type of moves with the VIX and a similar move, similar moves in the S&P 500. Anyway, so I'm just measuring the range on the bottom. And again, the asymmetrical move is going to typically be to the upside. You can see right here, it's 250% or more of its normal range. Notice this is a big VIX beginning to take off, market beginning to implode. And just real quick, just to get everybody up to speed, because I know everyone's not here every week. My original VIX research, you held over several days, and I went back and looked at that stuff, dusted it off a while back, and absolutely printed money until this little thing called the pandemic happened. And you get heavily long or heavily short coming in, something like that, and you get creamed. And, and I learned my lesson early on trading this and holding overnight by having a lot of S&P futures on and then coming in and getting creamed and on. So that's that's just a, an anomaly of short-term systems. I think if you're a pure short-term player, you're gonna run into some troubles because your risks are so great overnight. Now, but Dave, aren't you a position trader? I am, but if I'm up 500% and something gets whacked and I only get out up 400%, then I'm doing pretty good. Or even if I get whacked on something else, as long as I could occasionally catch that outlier, I'm gonna do okay. So basically, again, getting back to the VIX, we're just looking forward to get stretched and looking for reversions to the mean move. And you can see that happened a little bit today. So we were right around 10% or so, and it kind of imploded a little bit. But to my surprise, it didn't implode a lot. And as you can see here, at one second, I had a little VIX trade on, and I did it across multiple accounts, but I'm not going to knock your socks off. But again, the, the shorting of the VIX, isn't really where the money is, it's going long of the VIX. And that's why, I know I'm a nerd, <laughs> but that's why I'm so excited about this research that I think that next time we get the, the market uh, beginning to implode after it's been complacent for a while, and we get that 600% on a relative basis move in the VIX, where the VIX goes from, let's say the UBXY, and I don't know where it was back when it did, I think it was like 20 or something. UBXY, let's say it goes from 20 to 60, that's real money. And even if you just had 100 shares or something like that, you make like $4,000 on, on such a crazy move. And of course, you want to scale out a little bit along the way. And I'll show you that in one second. Anyway, so hopefully this makes sense. I know I rushed through it, but I will be recapping this and go in and watch the last few chart shows and then go way back in time or maybe three months, four months or a year ago when I first got hot on this VIX again, the VIX fever uh, shows. So here's what the VIX look like today. This is the SVXY, and 
the market, as you know, kind of imploded on the open or more than kind of imploded on the open. But it began to stabilize and back and fill and back and fill. Now, I didn't want to just jump in. So I ended up putting an order in well above that opening range. And I only put an order in for 100 shares. And I did do this across multiple accounts. But I wasn't really committed to piling into the VIX. I was more interested in trading some ETFs like SoxL did pretty good in that today. And, and LabU did pretty good in that too. And we can look at those when we get to the live charts. Now, as I'm putting together my slides and throwing some of these trades in last minute, I'm thinking I'm going to come across like, hey, everything's been great lately. No, everything has not been great lately. It's been really tough with this intraday stuff. And I reach a point where I'm just learning to sit on my hands more and more. And you got to be careful not to do too much. And as I preach robbing a line or stealing a line from Jimmy Rogers from the first market wizard says, I just wait until his money lie in the corner and all I do is walk over there and pick it up. Well, I've been guilty of not doing that a lot lately, trying to make something happen. And it's kind of that, but it was working so well. The five most dangerous words on Wall Street. I better count those because <laughs> someone just got called out on, on counting. Say, but it was working so well. Six words, I think, but it was working. So, well, six words. All right, six, six most dangerous words on Wall Street. And I've actually done some writing on that recently. And my intraday stuff, which is not my main focus and not my core, and that's why I call the, method, the, the trading service my core methodology, but I have been doing a little bit too much of that intraday stuff. And I can tell when I'm doing that, not only because my equity is headed lower, because I'm kind of grinding away all those nice profits I've earned over months and months and months with the core trading, but my back begins to hurt. Now, Soros once said, and there's been other famous people that, that talk about these ailments, but lately my back, uh, my left side of my back is where I get the pain, and then it's actually causing, uh, it might be pinching a nerve or something. I've got some tingling happening in my hands. Like, okay, Dave, you better back off because the equity has gone down, because the volatility has been just crazy. You've had these broadening formations during the day where the market makes both new highs and both, and also makes new lows. And the whipsaw has been frustrating. You look at the market, the market at the end of the day, you're thinking, oh man, I could have just got in, held on all day and exited by the close and made a lot of money. Well, it, it hasn't been that straight route higher, even on the downside. So it's just been, from my perspective, it's been pretty brutal. Now, one thing I woke up and wrote about recently is a saying we have in the South, the sun doesn't shine in the same dog's ass every day. So I would imagine these oscillator traders are in heaven. Now, don't rush out and start trading oscillators because guess what? The market might start trending again. Years ago, as I said, at nauseam, and I would never throw anybody under the bus, but I knew a trader and he was a trend trader or seemed like he was a trend trader and the market had this big fat reversal and i said hey you know did you get cream today oh no i i played that reversal it's like oh okay you know no matter what the market did that's the kind of trading he was doing and trust me nobody is that good i guarantee you you end up chasing your own tail so what i would encourage you to do getting back to like to the core stuff i'd encourage you to do that first and foremost before looking at this intraday stuff and, you know, I'm here anyway, and if I see some kind of opportunity, I just got to remind myself to wait until that money's lying in the corner and walk over and pick it up, as opposed to in and out, in and out, in and out, like the like the rat going for the cocaine. And, and one of the guys there said, he says, you know, Dave, one time you said, I'm not going to make any trades today. And that really stuck with me. And it's like, oh, I got to remind myself of that. And uh, so last couple of days, I've been trying not to make any trades until I absolutely couldn't stand it. And maybe that's why the entry on this SVXY is a little bit higher. But anyway, be careful not to change methodologies. You're better off finding something longer term and sticking with it, like the core methodology, the swing to intermediate term trading. And when things aren't fantastic, just become more and more selective. Wait for those setups, wait for those setups. And then once you get them, wait for entries, wait for entries. And I've probably been boring you to death with the trading service lately, because we hadn't had a whole lot of setups. And then I think two or three that we did have recently, none of them triggers and triggered. And we got another one going into tomorrow. We'll see what happens. If it implodes, we're not going 
to take it. Now, I know I kind of went all the way around <laughs> on that, but it looks like I struck a few cards here with, with a couple of you guys. And sometimes you need to hear these things. And somebody told me once that, uh, you know, Dave, I really don't get a lot out of you, your teachings. And I'm like, oh, really? He goes, yeah, but when you go on those rants, I, I, I sometimes get something out of it. So that kind of like, thanks, I think. So it did kind of give me license to rant. Anyway, so I didn't set the world on fire, as you can see with this trade, 100 shares, you know, big deal. I kind of wanted to establish a position because I was like, oh, I'm going to put an alert on this. It's like, you know what, Dave, it looks good enough to where you could put in an order. But like I said, the volatility just didn't seem to be coming off like it should today. And that's something I can't really teach, but it, maybe I can. If you look at the VIX up in the 30s or whatever, and the market begins to rally, the market's like, you know what? I don't trust you just yet. And maybe there's a lesson. Maybe there's a lesson in that in and of itself. Maybe the VIX has to start coming off for the market to rally. I'd be interested in knowing if any of you guys want to take that ball and run with it and do a little research. And, you know, maybe there's something there. And that's why I love to teach so much is because a lot of stuff comes out in the teaching. And I learn a lot myself from a selfish perspective. And also, like the trading service, it forces me to do my homework. Maybe I should fill it not so much next time, Dave. So there's a period down there. You know, I just put on 100 shares again, as opposed to putting an alert in so I can get an alert and see what's going on. It's like, yeah, you know, buy 100 shares, see what happens. And I trailed the stop. I think I trailed like a one point stop on this. I knew if it came back into the old lows, whatever that is, that it wouldn't be worthwhile. And I didn't put an IPT in there. And I'll show you another one with an IPT initial profit target in a few minutes. And so I just rolled it all day. And by the end of the day, I made $37. Yeah, I did do it in more than one account, but I didn't do it big in any other account. So better than the poking eye, I suppose. And again, as I said a second ago, your, your moves are going to be asymmetrical to the upside of the VIX as opposed to the implosion of the VIX. Now, every now and then you will get an implosion of the VIX, but not like the explosion type of moves.